All right. Now, what's the bitch? Put Ted Tilly on the tape. Come on. I know Pete Rose is in his 40s, but we're talking old here. All right, Bubba. What's going on here? Go on, Bubba. Tell your grandpa what Kevin said about him. Hmm, maybe Kevin would like to tell me himself. He said you were too old to play baseball. You ought to be in a rest home, not in a ball field. Now pitching for the Toros, number 27, Ted Tilly. Just a ball game. Just a ball game? You know Fernando's got a no-hitter going into the night? Oh. I cannot believe I'm missing this game because the boss won't let you use your stop to fix the radio. I'm sorry. It just happens to be the way he works. you think he like baseball, you know? California's got a team called the Angels. Hey, way to go, boss! No le llega el primer base, Sax la virita a Fernando Yosa de primera. Cute, that was cute. Here, let me try. Well, the Toros find themselves down to their last out. It's going to be up to Luis Sanchez to try to generate something, or the Toros will suffer their 20th loss in a row. Strike one, called on the outside corner. Great, I go from a no-hitter to a no-winner. Come on, you're the one who's always telling me how much you love baseball, win or lose. Yeah, well, I do. I mean, we got some real losers here. The pitch, line drive right to Haskins, and the game's over. See what I mean? Well, Boy, if anybody could use the boss's help, it's the Toros. Mark, you took the words right out of my mouth. How to turn this ball club around. There you go, son. That makes you look like a real all-star. Yeah, I wish I could buy it. A little short on funds, huh? Yeah. You working hard in school? Sure, why? I tell you what, you can owe me. You mean it? Yeah, I mean it. But you keep studying. Yes, sir. Thanks! <laughs> Well, looks like business wasn't too good, huh? It was lousy. Well, it always runs in spurts. You'll see. Things will pick up once the team starts winning. I sure hope so, Grandpa. Yeah. I remember pitching for a team called the Beeville Bombers. Boy, they were just like these Toros. It seems, though, the only thing we could do right was to show up at the ballpark. But the problem was, 
they weren't having any fun playing ball. And, and you, you gotta, gotta have, have fun, fun if you, you wanna, wanna win. <laughs> Looks like you heard this story before, huh? Yeah, once or twice. Well, then it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I just don't understand it. What does it take to motivate you guys? I yell. I insult. I even beg you. Nothing works. Well, I don't mean to point any figures. But unless we start working all together, we're all going to be sent packing, you understand? Practice tomorrow, 10.30 sharp. You know, you ask me, old Brisby's more worried about losing his job than he is anything else. Hey, he wants to win, so we should all try harder. Yeah, well, I wasn't the one who lined out to end the game, now was it, partner? You're right, amigo. A little more hustle around the bases, you could have tied the game for us. Hey, look, I didn't ask to come down here, so I'm not doing any more than I have to. You got that, amigo? Great guy. No wonder they kicked him down to the minors. So why include the Toros in your sports story? After all, I haven't exactly been a favorite among you sports writers. That's an in-depth article, Mr. Rogers. We'd like to include everybody in the league. Yeah, winners and losers. Besides, from the size of the crowd you had today, I'd say you could use a little publicity. Yeah, you got that right. I guess any press coverage, even bad, is better than none at all. All right, go ahead. I'll have security issue you some badges. Thank you, sir. I'm sure you'll be pleased with your decision. Amy, uh, get me Brisby. He's probably in the locker room, crying. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Brisby? It's me. I'm Jonathan Smith, Consolidated News. This is my partner, Mark Gordon. Oh, yeah. The Almighty himself was just talking to me about you. The boss? No, no, he's talking about Rogers. Look, we know you've had a tough season, so we'll try to stay out of your hair as much as we can. Well, thanks. I'd like my last season to be a pleasant one. How do you know it's your last? Rogers can't stand me. How come? Oh, well, you see, Flynn, the old boss, me and him were like that. He was a great guy. When he sold his steel to Rogers, he made one stipulation. Said, as long as the Taurus had more wins than losses, I would always be rehired as manager, guaranteed, with no payoffs, until I was ready to retire. <laughs> you know, the first thing he did, he let all my veteran players go, traded them off, left them with a bunch of green kids. Well, you can still make it happen. Well, I know that. I know these boys play great ball. My problem is to convince them. Hey, Doc. Hey, Ted, what do you know? I hate the body. I just came by to pick up my tickets for tomorrow's game. Here they are. Maybe the more just ask. That way I know I have some people in the stands. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, by the way, Ted Tilly, this here is uh, Smith and Gordon. Consolidated News could do a story on the Toros. Oh, nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. You wouldn't be the same Ted Tilly they used to call the Louisiana Flash, would you? Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised anyone would even remember me. Why, are you kidding? You hold almost every record there is in the old Negro League. <laughs> I did my share of pitching in those days. I'll say, four no-hitters in one season. Yep, those were the days. Well, I gotta get going. I left my grandson waiting outside. Real nice meeting you. Hey, the pleasure was all mine, believe me. Look, if you don't mind, I'd like to stop by your place sometime, talk about the old days. Fine. There's nothing I like better. Anytime. Anytime at all. Thanks for the tickets, Doc. Right. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah. I need more than luck. Gonna need a miracle. Well, you never know. You just might get one. All right, son. Come on, show me those catches up. Come on. Come on. Who got a B? Who got an A? We don't have any C's, right? All right, all right. Well, now it looks like everybody passed. Okay, Jimmy, you give him the ticket. Ah! <laughs> How about our ticket? Uh, you know the rules, Kip. You show me the test, a good grade gets a good seat. That's the way it works. Yeah, well, we lost the paper. Kevin, a line is even worse than being lazy. Just forget it. 
Afternoon, Miss Taylor. Afternoon, Mr. Tilly. Hey, Grandpa, can I stay and eat a few with the guy? Yeah, sure. You take your time. You give me a chance to straighten up the apartment. Grandpa, don't you ever give up. What you mean? I mean, you want me out of here so you can try a few moves with Miss Taylor. Well, you know what they say. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> Never said that, didn't know, Miss Taylor. Here, let me give you a hand with those groceries, Miss Taylor. Uh, that won't be necessary, thank you. That won't be necessary, thank you. Strike three and you're out. God, I wish I could get that woman to take notice. What's a man got to do? Don't beat the door down. It's open. Oh, Miss Taylor. What a pleasant surprise. Not a pleasant surprise for me, Mr. Tilly. This came crashing through my window. I assume it's from one of your hooligans. Well, Miss Taylor, why, you got to be mistaken. Now, those boys were too far away to hit your window. I'm sorry. I'm afraid it's my fault. You ought to have seen it, Grandpa. I ain't never seen nobody hit a ball like that. So, not seen. Uh, Miss Taylor, uh, this is Mr. Smith and Mr. Gordon. They're sports reporters. Too bad they were in the street and not at the typewriters. I really am sorry. Please let me pay for the window. Hey, no need. Uh, I'll be more than happy to fix that window. Uh, oh, we can go over to your place right now, and I'll measure that broken pane. Oh, hello. Oh, Mr. Hauser. <laughs> what? Oh, I see. Uh, how soon? Oh, right away. Yeah, me too. Uh, no, 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 no. I know it's not your doing. Uh, goodbye, sir. Grandpa, what's wrong? My souvenir stand. They, they took it away just like that. Rogers hired an outside vendor for after all these years. Well, Miss Taylor, I'll be over later to measure that window, if it's all right. Certainly. something. Get that old man his job back. I already told you I can't get his old job back. Then what are we doing here? I'm covering a great baseball story. Oh, yeah, it's terrific. A baseball team that can't win, an old man who gets the boot. That's exciting. The story's only as good as its ending. But I already know the ending. You just told me that you can't help Ted get his old job back. That's right, his old job. Now, look, I want you to go over to Ted's tomorrow. Find out everything you can about his old playing days. We'll need him for the story. What makes you think he's going to want to be interviewed after what's happened? Trust me, he will. Hey, hey that's very good. The boss did that? Mm-hmm. Hey, he knows his baseball. Oh, yeah, we play a lot up there. You kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Of course, there's one rule that's different. What's that? Thou shalt not steal. Oh, that's cute, John. Cute, cute. You're very cute. Oh. I get it, Dad. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for Ted Tilly. I'm Ted Tilly. What? Well, with the Ted Tilly I'm looking for is a lot taller. Oh, hello, Mr. Garden. Hey, Ted. Uh, please come in. How are you? Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, Ted, this is Mr. Gordon. He's one of those reporters I told you about. 
Uh, this is my son, Ted Jr. Yeah, forget the message. The name's Mark. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, we want to include you in the story we're doing about the Toros, if that's all right. Oh, forget it. The Toros dumped my dad, and we don't want to have nothing to do with him. Teddy, please. Please, nothing. My dad, you gave him 18 years of honest sweat. Now, Money Hungry Rogers throws you out like an old shoe. All right, son, that's enough. Listen, I can understand if you're better. I'll just tell Jonathan you're not in the mood. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm all right. When I first got the call, I was really hurt. That stand was mine for many a season. But I guess all good things got to come to an end. Yeah, but not like this, Dad. He left you with nothing. I got memories, a lot of good memories. Try paying the rent with memories. Now, we don't talk about trouble in front of strangers. Uh, Bubba, uh, get Mark here something to drink. Uh, this could take a while. And according to Doc Brisby, the blame starts at the top in the owner's box. A team with no veterans is a team with no leaders, and no leaders means no wins. Yeah, well, no wins means you're going to be through, Doc. And then there's the matter of Ted Tilly, another example of D.W. Rogers' way of running a ball club. How do you like the article? How did you get in here? I gave orders to have you barred from this stadium. I just popped in. Hey, the paper told me they've never had a response to an article like this before. Over a thousand calls already. Quite a little hatchet job you did on me, Smith. And this bit about me dumping Ted Tilly makes me sound like the biggest villain since Attila the Hun. Oh, is there anything in there that isn't true? I made a sound business decision. Yeah, well, maybe the fans think baseball ought to be more than just business. Nothing is more than business. Oh, that's a very good quote. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Seems like every time you open your mouth, you put your foot in it a little farther. Get out of here! Okay. So you're passing up a great chance to turn things around. I could make you the biggest hero since Ebenezer Scrooge. That's just the trouble. You've already made me sound like Scrooge. And he was a penny-pinching bum! After he found Christmas, I could make you a real-life Santa Claus, Mr. Rogers. Little children would speak your name, and odd whispers grown men would get teary-eyed. Who cares? And the fans would come streaming through the gate. I care. Sit down. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, what's the bitch? Put Ted Tilly on the team. What? You heard me. You're nuts. You know that. Just hear me out. The fans are after your blood right now. Yeah, thanks to you. Hey, look, I'm just a reporter. I write down what people say. And Doc Brisby says the team has no veterans. Here's your chance to give him one. Come on. I know Pete Rose is in his 40s, but we're talking old here. Oh, that's right. Well, the press is going to eat it up. You put that old man on your team, give him a chance to earn a pension, and the fans are going to love you for it. Besides, you want a losing season anyway to get rid of Brisby. What's in it for you? An exclusive on a great story. Every sports page in the country is going to want to carry this. Mr. Rogers, you got a chance to put the heart back in baseball. Yeah. Yeah, the heart. All right. Doc Brisby wants a veteran. I'll give him one. A veteran of World War One. <laughs> Oh, take it easy, son. What's going on? Open the box, Grandpa. We go on, Ted. Open the box. What is this? It's a uniform. Roger's heard about your problem. He's agreed to put you on the roster. All right, what's the joke? Hey, it's no joke. Roger's had a change of heart, I guess. Give you a chance for a spot on the team and a chance for a pension. Say no joke. As God is my witness. I feel it's a great thing for the Toros to do, and I'm looking forward to playing alongside of him. The guy's just a circus act, but it's typical of this whole organization. Yeah. How does it feel to be the oldest rookie on the squad? Ted, how does it feel to be back in baseball? All right, gentlemen, I have a brief statement to read. On behalf of the Toros, I proudly acknowledge the addition of Ted Tilly to the active player's roster. We are looking forward to his contribution as part of the organization. Owner, D.W. Rogers. 
How can a man his age pitch? Come on, Doc. Do you really think Ted can contribute at his age? I don't know. But if nothing else, it's going to be a damn fine example for these young ball players here. You can quote me on that. <laughs> Anything out of the old time, so don't go hurting yourself. Hey, Ted, how do you feel? Uh, a little sore. The legs ain't what they used to be. Well, listen, Ted, you and I know the real reason for you being here. As long as you're in uniform for all those games, that's all that matters. Don't go hurting yourself now. Grandpa. Go on, Bubba. Tell your grandpa what Kevin said about him. Hmm, maybe Kevin would like to tell me himself. They said you were too old to play baseball. You ought to be in a rest home, not in a ball field. It's full of you know what, ain't he, Grandpa? Now pitching Ted Tilly, number 27, the Louisiana Flash. Was that you just now? Yeah. I thought it was part of my dream. You know, Bubba called. He's pretty worried about you. Worried? Uh, what time is it? It's after midnight. Oh. I just sat down here for a minute. I guess I went out like a light. I can't say I blame you. You put in a tough day. Yeah, tough. Why'd you come out to the park tonight? Turn in my uniform. What for? Because. That's a great answer. You know what I was dreaming just now? I was dreaming I was out here on the mound pitching for the Toros. Except it was like it was 40 years ago. Me steaming that ball across the plate, umpire yelling out them strikes. God, I wish it was 40 years ago. But it ain't. It's today. I can't do nothing for this club. Everybody knows it. Even Bubba's little friends know it. So you're just gonna quit? That's right. Well, one thing's for sure, you know Jackie Robinson. What's that supposed to mean? Well, come on, what do you think's tougher? Being the oldest man in professional baseball or being the first black man in professional baseball? <laughs> come on. My jacket was in his 20s. He played the game like nobody else. He helped the club. And you could be a help to this one. What's wrong with the Taurus? They're down on themselves. They're not having fun. They're too tight to win. Then loosen them up. Be a leader. Be an inspiration to them. An inspiration? One day on the club, and I'm so so I can barely move. And you talk about inspiration. I'm talking about trying, not just giving up. What do you think Bubba's friends are going to say to him when they find out you quit?
better hit the sack. I've got to go to the practice tomorrow. Let those wrists go. How's it going? That's fine, considering. Considering what? Today's the day. What's that mean? If we lose this one, I'm history. Mathematically out of it. Yeah, maybe you'll win it. Oh, yeah. What good will it do? We got ten more games to go. We got to win every one of those to be above 500 ball. Got as much chance of doing that as I have winning the state lottery. I don't know. People win it. Oh, sure. Well, that Sanders really powders the ball. Oh, yeah. He could have been the difference for us this season. Yeah, why wasn't he? Attitude. He thinks it's beneath him to be playing back in the minors. Yeah, the same attitude he had him sent down. You tell him that. All right, Sanders, lay one down. Come on, old Tyra, come on. Come on. <laughs> what a smart mouth kid. Hey, maybe next time, Pop. <laughs> Don't you ever do that. I played this game before you were born, and I play it now harder than you do. Hey. Who do you think you're talking to? A selfish, lazy, complaining kid who could be a good ball player if he didn't overrate himself and play the game. And the rest of you could win, too. If you stop underrating yourselves and go on that field and have some fun. When I played the game, that's what we were out there for. Because that sure as hell wasn't any money. Stop worrying about losing. It's too late for that now. You've done that all season. You worried and lost, worried and lost. Now let's go out there and have some fun. And the winning will take care of itself. All right. Let's play some baseball. Doc, it looks like you got yourself a team leader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I need now is a miracle. <laughs> You've been sitting there. Oh, just a few minutes. Sorry for the surprise. I just wanted to stop by and tell you we've finished our assignment. Well, I'll bet your boss was glad to hear that. As a matter of fact, he was. Oh, by the way, I owe you some thanks. Putting Tilly on the roster certainly has paid off. Yeah. yeah the team's doing real well. Attendance is up. Of course, you, uh, you may be stuck with Doc Brisby. Maybe. But we still have one game left. Anything can happen. Oh, that's very true. Well, thanks again for your cooperation, Mr. Rogers. See you at the game tomorrow. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Uh, Miss Taylor. Mr. Tilly. I apologize for not being over sooner to measure that window. 
But I've had such a crazy batch of stuff going on in my life. <laughs> so my summer school students have told me. Well, tomorrow's our last game, so as I thought I could measure that window. It's been repaired, thank you. Oh, I'd be glad to pay for it. That won't be necessary. Maddie, what is it about me? I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. I'm not saying I'm Sidney Podia, but I try. I don't even expect you to feel about me the way I feel about you. Mr. Tilly. Woman, hear me out. All I'm saying is that I try. But you treat me like I was a leper with a bell on my neck. I don't like what you represent. What are you talking about? I'm talking about baseball. I teach a summer school class filled with children who need an education. I finish my day and come home from school and find those children outside playing baseball, usually with you. Miss Taylor, I can explain that I... You don't have to. A quick dollar in sports is what you care about. Well, 99 and 9 tenths percent of my students will never make it in professional baseball. They need to be encouraged to get an education. I know that. You do? Well, let me tell you something. I have a student named Kevin. He's not welcome in your street games. He told me so himself. And you know something? In the last two weeks, he's pulled his grades up from an F to a C because his mind wasn't on baseball. Miss Taylor, you are a very smart and attractive woman. But darling, sometimes you don't know what in the world you're talking about. By the way, those are for you. Check your grades, pass out the tickets. Now let's hear them grades. All right, we got an A. A, B, here we go. Take off. Where you got it? All right, B, there you go. Take off. A, B, C, here you go, here you go. All right, what do you got? C plus and A. B, all right. Here's mine. Hey, Kevin, you got an A. Way to go. I worked real hard. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Here's your ticket, pal. Thanks. Miss Taylor. I got a ticket to the game. Miss Taylor? Hello, Mr. Gordon. Ted asked me to give you this. It's the last game of the season. He's kind of hoping you can make it. No, thank you. Mr. Tilly knows how I feel about baseball. What do you got against baseball? Mr. Gordon, these children need an education. Book learning, not ball play. You know, they say, ma'am, all work and no play. In this case, it's just the opposite. Mr. Tilly encourages all play and no work. Oh, ma'am, that's not true. Nobody cares more about how these kids do in school than Ted Tilly. That's your opinion. That's not my opinion, ma'am. That's a fact. Jerry hands out baseball tickets, but only if they get passing grades. What are you talking about? I am talking about rewarding these kids for their work. You know, most of the parents around here don't know how their kids are doing in school. They don't care. But Ted Tilly does. His rule is no work, no ticket. See that kid, Kevin, that ran off excited about his ticket? His grades are up, aren't they? Yes. Well, he's excited because that's his first ticket. Now, I'm not saying he's doing better just because of Ted Tilly, but I'll guarantee you one thing, he's a big part of it. Why didn't he ever tell me about this? Maybe you never gave him a chance, man. Well, I better get to the ball game. Take care of yourself. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm going to 
make this real short. This is our last game today. We want you to know that no matter what happens out there tonight, I'm never going to forget the last couple of weeks. You guys really pulled yourselves together. You've been playing big league ball. And I want you to know that this is a team I will never forget. Uh, I just want to say something. Uh, I've been real jackass most of this season. And I know that. But uh, I got knocked down to size and well learned a lot from the man we all voted team captain for this final game. Now, in case you was wondering, the vote was unanimous. Ted Tilly. Mick's got a blister. He's having trouble holding the ball. Is it bad? Yeah, Doc. I'm sorry. Don't worry. You pitched a great game. That'll be all for Dawson. Party A's coming in. Boy, I hate to be in his spot. This game is a big one for the Toro. In there. Yeah, I took him out. He's been hurt. No way, Mr. Rogers. No, I... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I heard you. Chili, come here. Yeah, Doc. Get your glove. You're going in there to pitch. Uh -huh. Get your glove. Wait a minute. You ain't kidding. No, I'm not. Rogers wants you in there to pitch. We'll forfeit the game. So get out there. Now pitching for the Toro, number 27, Ted Tilly. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard right. The man you read about in the papers is coming in to pitch. Boy, there's no doubt about one thing. Tilly will be in the record book as the oldest player in professional baseball. Here comes your veteran, Brisby. <laughs> and there goes your job. Good luck, Ted. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Oh, dear Lord, why me? Why tonight? And why has she got to be out here to see it? Are uh, you a little nervous, Ted? Huh? What you doing out here? Oh, it's all right. Nobody else can see me, just you. What? Yes, see, I'm, I'm an angel. I've been sent down to help you. I must be losing my mind. First to bring me out here to pitch, and now you tell me you're an angel I can't see. Silly, take your warm-ups. Let's go. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now, hey, you You see anyone unusual out here? What are you talking about? I told you. Tilly, are you going to take your warm-ups or not? Tell him you don't need them. I don't need them. All right, then. Let's play ball. 
I can't go through with this. Oh, yes, you can. I can. I tell you, I'm an old man. Oh, not tonight. For you, Ted, tonight is 40 years ago. So go on. Show him what the Louisiana Flash can do. Tilly, I said, play ball! Look, Jonathan. You got to pitch next year. No, Bubba. I'll stay home at the club. But my pitching days are over for good this time. But why? You were great tonight. I'll let you in on a little secret. That Jonathan fella, he's one of them angels. Oh, no, he's not, Grandpa. He's a Toro fan all the way. <laughs> <laughs> 